Right, I'm at a large property today in Trowbridge and they've had damp proofing works previously and also some recently. Unfortunately it's all gone wrong so I've been called in to offer an opinion based on fact. When I say fact it's data. So what we're doing is more of an invasive survey which we typically do all the time. Um, so when I say an invasive survey we've taken a lot of plaster samples. Um, and so it's following the guidance in BRE Digest 245. So it's actually showing if there's moisture rising, if there's salt, we're testing for any nitrates and chlorides. And the conclusion was, when I'd done the initial survey, I could see you got a lot of drainage issues. But that was actually confirmed by the gravimetrics because the gravimetrics showed the walls were absolutely soaking wet, um, but there was hardly any salts in some of the places. There was no salts whatsoever. So that is indicative of a mains water leak, block drainage issues this that and the other and we've done all the leak detection inside we found nothing and the conclusions are very very simple very simple so again big big building got two, got two down pipes at the front either and you've got this one in the corner here as well i just want to show you this one here this was not checked by the damp proof and expert well, i shouldn't say expert but damp proofer so you can see it goes to nothing there's nothing there there's no drainage issue so that has literally just been absorbed you've got high ground levels, you've got render to the floor bridging any potential DPC um, and just causing saturation to the base of the wall and then here you've got an echo drain that's been cut out there with an angle grinder and you can just see, I don't know how clear this is, I go down there but basically there's big holes down there as well so before it even gets to any drainage half that water is just going to go underneath the echo drain um, if I just come around here a minute as well, I just want to show you here. Let's just zoom in a minute. You see it's all cracked. So any water is going to just be running back along there. You've got all the, jo all the joints here are open. Um, now this eco drain runs all the way along here. And it stops by the front door. And the other one starts there. Again, nice big gap where just a button up there, someone's just put a piece in. And you come to the end up here, and you've got a downpipe. And this is a big roof. You can see there, that's all just been filled in there. Somebody's put a bit of sand and cement in there. But a particular issue you find with echo drains is, is something like this. So all these joints here basically allow water to run through. And you can actually see here where the support's broken. Any water now, if you can actually see, I don't know if you can actually see that, it's actually running back in there. Now this might be a bit of exaggeration to using a hose pipe, but you can imagine once that water um, is getting to a certain height, it is going to reach that and go across. And also, just down there, you can actually, if I zoom in there, how clear that is, you can actually see the water is actually running around the back of there. It's going to run all the way down that joint. Now, if you think about that, very, very simply, why would anyone put an echo drill right against that building? There's actually no point. There's a ditch here. Never, never. There's no water runoff down there at all. So if you think about it, you've got the render to the floor with modern paint. Um, that's just trapping any moisture in it that's rising, so it's just pushing it up even further. So realistically, the simple thing to do is to get those down pipes, put them into some soakaways um, or some proper drainage somewhere, and just dig that every right. Form a bell mouth. That's just like a little lip on the wall, so any water can just drip off. And then basically let it dry, let it dry down, repoint it with lime when it's in the warmer months when you get them five degrees plus. But this is such a simple solution. However, there is damage to the plaster inside, but because there's no salt there, some of it will be suitable just to be dried down. And um, there's condensation issues in there as well because the ventilation is not quite right and obviously the walls are so wet and cold but this is another thing as well soakaways how long do they last for how well have they been done we're just going to show you now 
a CCTV, CCTV um, image of the, of the drainage system on there. So basically you've got a, what appears to be a 100 mil pipe going through the floor. But what you've actually found is now, if we come through here, you can actually see, we're going through a bit of water now. It's actually, if you now see now, that is flooded. So the soak away is blocked. And I went right on down as far as I could and it's just mud on everything on there. Um, so what we can actually do now, I'm just gonna come back out so you can actually see that it's all water. Um, we can actually, because um, it's got a sonde in it, we can actually locate the soak away so it can be dug out quite easily or in my opinion a better way to do it is connect it to the proper drainage if it's possible um, because that's more of a long-term solution so you don't come back to poss this possible issue again with block soak away so with soak aways as well what you can simply find is so the weather hasn't really been that wet recently but sometimes you just don't even know they're blocked um, because unless you can see water coming back up, how would you really know? Sometimes you just don't know. But it's, a, it's always a good thing if you can um, check them, put a camera down there, when, especially when there's a lot of water running down there, you can actually prove that they are not working properly. But it's a great cause of damp.